everybody, welcome to the vlog. There's poppin', me what's and Hubby. What's poppin', hey, poppin'? Woo! So, um, we are home today. It is Saturday. We are Saturday. chillin'. Yes. Chillin'. I was off today, Ooh. so we had a lot of fun. We went out to eat. Um, ooh. <clears throat> Coffee. Went out to eat, whatever. Went out to eat, um, hung out with some of our church, our church fam family, today. Fam, fam. And we have a bit of a surprise for you all. You probably saw from the title already. We brought a baby home. So, you know, it's that easy, really. I mean, you know, people think you have to carry them for nine months You just go to the supermarket, pick but out really, what you no, want. I mean, That's it. It's like, you know how you have the produce section? No, you and you pick up like baby. a fruit. This is baby. Okay. <laughs> well, there she is. Here's our special grocery store baby. Say, hey, boo. Hey, boo. Look, it's you. Don't mind our messy house, y'all. This is a vlog, so we don't have to be all extra clean. Hey, boo. Say, what's up? Good job. Ha, so we are just kidding, y'all. Just yanking your, your strings. Chain. Yanking your chains. Um, this is actually our niece. Uh, she's going to be spending the night with us tonight. And it's exciting because especially, you know, as long as we've been trying to get pregnant and everything, I was telling Daryl after, you know, her, after her mom and my sister left, um, I was like, dang, this is the first time we've ever really been like alone, alone with a baby, like overnight. Like, I mean, of course, you know, we have all these people around us with kids. So, of course, we've been alone with babies for, you know, like small periods of time. Of course, my brother's come to spend the night. But that was like he wasn't a baby. Like this chick is like what four months old now yeah. four months ish something like that she's a baby baby like still eating formula baby by the time justin was spending the night he was eating eggs <laughs> i mean you know so uh it's actually it's exciting because you know whenever we do start have uh having kids or whatever then at least we'll have this experience like oh my gosh we actually had a babysit our house overnight and you know this might not even be the first time who knows um we'll kind of see how it goes she's a pretty chill calm baby mm -hmm. and then of course you go cry as soon as i say that um, but we're pretty much chilling she was asleep for a minute when she first got here but she has woken up now here you go okay so it's exciting like she said because we get to have a baby over and it's something that we typically don't do um i mean we like to be around babies of course obviously but we haven't actually had one over the house um ever so this is our first time doing so and uh, we're gonna see how it goes i mean honestly this is a journey for both of us because we're trying to be parents um she might be pregnant right now <laughs> save this video because if she actually is then i called it anyway um we enjoy the opportunity of doing stuff like this because it gives us the uh it gives us an insight on what it really is um even for a night to be a parent kind of what it's like so it's a good little step forward into one general direction of parenthood and i think that everyone should do it especially if you want a kid uh, i think before you just make that decision and you say, you know what, I want to do this. You should find someone who has a child. Get all the diaper bags. Get all the stuff. Get all the infant meal and formula. And give yourself a time to actually find out what it's like to have a baby. Sit a night. Do it for a little bit. See what it's like. Because you might be like, man, I couldn't sleep. I couldn't do nothing. I had to look at the baby the whole time. They didn't want me to hold them. It could be a big deal. And, and a lot of times you might find yourself in a place where you're like, never mind. Maybe I don't want a kid. But that's why you got to experience stuff like this. So, any who's it's. Um, we just really are going to enjoy this time with our niece. Um, so precious, look at her, looking over here. She's like, what's going on? Mm -hmm. What you doing? What you doing? You wanna know what I'm doing? I'm enjoying you. So, um, her sister is, uh, she brought her over, needed some time, needed a break. This is her younger sister. Um, um, Amaya is um, just so cute. So we're gonna take care of her for the night, see how it goes, and give you all an update tomorrow. Because quite frankly, like I said, it's, it's an experience we haven't experienced yet, so I don't wanna keep the camera in our face and get distracted talking to a camera. We got a baby in the house, I don't wanna get distracted and then we miss something. So 
uh, we're gonna cut this short, but we just wanted to make this short update and then uh, tell you guys in a minute what it was like. We're gonna sit down with you and talk about it, the experience and what it was like. So this is only part one of this particular video. And uh, see you in a second. <sighs> okay guys, we're back. Um, so the babysitting went really well. Uh, it was tiring and it, was, it wasn't difficult. So basically just to map out what happened, after we cut the camera off, uh, Amaya was sleepy. She began to um, show signs of she's ready to go to bed. So of course she's gonna get whiny, she's gonna cry a little bit. We changed her diaper, that was great. Then we got her a bottle of milk, tossed that in her mouth, and she was chilling for a little bit. Um, I had YouTube on, I'm laying on the floor, and we're watching it, but she's not actually going to sleep. So I'm like, man, this was a mistake. I probably shouldn't have did this. Now she's probably awake. But anyway, as time went on, uh, I laid Amaya down, my wife laid down with her. And then as I was doing something, I came back and they were both asleep. So I said to myself, all right, well, my job's done. So I went to sleep. Uh, but when I went to sleep, that's when her job started because that girl woke up again two more times. So after that happened, then we got the bottle and, and well, she got the bottle, bottle and fed her, and got her back to sleep, changed her diaper. But the experience was interesting because that was our first time ever having a baby in the house, just with us. I mean, just us. And so um, it was good. And I think it was something that was needed because especially a couple that wants to get into the parenthood thing so fast. Uh, and I say so fast because societally, we're doing this really fast, but we wanna be parents. Uh, we're in our early 20s. So of course we need experience with that. And we got it and it was okay. I mean, obviously, it's not the same thing as taking care of a human being mm -hmm. that happens. She went back home the next Right, time. that happens to share your DNA, and you gotta feed them and stuff. That's not what we went through, but um, that child did share her DNA, some of it, <laughs> and uh, we took care of her for a little bit. So, I mean, to an extent, it was a good learning experience, but uh, it's definitely not the full thing. So, from that, I'm, I mean, I like it. It wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. It's just, it wasn't, she, she's not a crying type of baby. She's not all over the place. She can't Welcome. walk yet. Thank so, Jesus. you know, there's a huge part of that experience we're missing. And um, so, don't roast us in the comments, but parenthood seems like a lot of fun. <laughs> seems great to me. So, I mean, someone's gonna be like, yeah, until they turn one or two. Okay, well, fine. E but. Even though she, even though babies, especially that young, because she's only three months, even though she's such a tiny baby, she doesn't really talk or, or do much, they still require your attention. And I definitely was able to kind of see that firsthand when we were watching her because we had her, you know, not only during the night, but we had her, you know, the next day for most of the day. We went to church with her and everything. And it, I definitely saw, like, you know, when it's just you two, you can kind of forget, like, oh, you just kind of go about living your regular life, but then yeah. when there's a baby, they literally require your attention like all the time, unless they're sleeping. And I know Which, that sounds silly, but it's like, I mean, you like, don't notice that unless you have a baby, and like they do, they really yeah. do require a lot of attention. They require, like, you know, even even if even if you're just playing with them, them, you know, letting them hold your finger and stuff, they still, you know, if they don't have your attention, they start getting fussy, and you know, so it definitely showed me how when we start having kids and everything how much attention they require and just being you know patient with them and saying you know why are you crying now because they can't talk so it's like are you crying because you're, you're hungry? hungry or you just um, peed yourself or yeah, pooped yourself or are you tired sleepy, or did you, you know, just hurt yourself or is this a good cry or a bad cry are sometimes you sick they just make these noises like ah do you have an ear infection that? yeah are you so i was like Cause I think like she started fussing during church and I was like, what's wrong with this girl? And then um, another girl, she um, she has a baby. Well, her baby is a little bit older now. She was like, oh, it's her diaper. I was like, huh? Oh, okay. And <laughs> so I, I guess, I don't, I don't know how it works, you know, whenever you finally start having kids or whenever you finally get pregnant, like, does it come to you naturally? Like, you're just like, oh, it must be the diaper. No, or, I think it know. takes, I'll tell you why I think it's, it's different for every parent because every child's cry is different for every single thing so it takes getting acclimated to it 
And then once you realize they're all pretty much common across all children, then you start to realize, oh, well, you ever seen like someone at a bus stop that baby's crying? Mm -hmm. Someone walks over and does something and it's like the baby stop. Because at that point, you're like, I kind of get it. Like there's a common denominator between all babies, I think. And once you took care of one for a while, you're like, yeah, okay, this is pretty, yeah. you know. So because we didn't have any experience in it, it's like, hey, you know. And I'm not going to say we, because she took care of her little brother when he was a baby. Mm -hmm. I mean, she was there. But it's, you know. But it's different. And even then, you know, I was still living at home. By the time I moved out, he was, what, one, mm. two, he was like one, one and a half. Yeah. And when he would come and spend the night, you know, I caught, it, it, he was a little bit older. He was at least one years old. Because when I was born, when he was born, I was 17. And right. I was, eight, of course, after eight, over 18 when I moved out. So he was at least one. So it wasn't like, she, this was a brand spanking new baby. So that was definitely like it's, I mean, so she it's still like, had that new baby smell yeah. on her. Like. So when he was born, you know, even though we were living in the same house, it was pretty much, you know, baby cry, here you go, mom. And that's it. So it was definitely a different type of experience. There's nobody else to kind of turn around and be like, okay, here, you know, because it's so. just you. But baby cry and, if and I, I look think, at you. And I think that's something that being on, the, being on a trying to conceive course or just being a parent that wants to have a kid or being being a person, an adult that wants to have a child, anybody outside looking in, meaning someone who already has kids, looking at people like us who want kids, they're always like, oh, you don't know what you get yourself into. Oh, it's going to be crazy. Your life is over. And what I've realized is, from this experience especially, is to stop listening to people. Because they always do that. They always, like, their miserable oh, time. Oh, this we shouldn't have got married. Their miserable time surprised. is going to be your miserable time, and their yeah. bad experience is going to be your bad you experience. It. And yeah. that, so far, it's not true. I mean, me and my wife got married. Literally, I went to a mall one day, and I was going to, I was looking for a ring for her to, to ask her to marry me. The gentleman at the ring stand was like, "Don't do it. Don't marry her. Marriage is terrible." After like, I we remember got that engaged, day. you'd be surprised how many people were like, "Don't get married." Yeah. And you know, That's what it is. if we listen to them, then we're you know, and so you know, if the rest of society listened to them, there would be no babies being. Well, actually, there probably there's still be babies, babies before, being born. <laughs> so I mean, the whole idea you that you know, people you're, are always going to tell you not to do something, and that yeah. doesn't mean that you shouldn't do it. That just means that they may have had a bad experience with it. Yeah. But you know, you take their experience and you learn from it, and you turn those lemons into lemonade. You throw the lemons at the wall, let them crack open, let the lemon juice fall into your cup and you make some lemonade. And see a smart man learns from his mistakes, but a wise man learns from other people's mistakes. Mm -hmm. The one mistake that I've seen a lot of people make is listening to other people and getting opinions about an experience they have not actually had. And so because we haven't had the experience of being parents yet, I'm not gonna sit here and listen to everybody else. I just wanna do it for myself. So kind of learn as you go. I think that's definitely one of those things you kinda learn as you go. Yeah. Because I've seen, I've seen different experiences. You and you know, even like as you start having more kids, the first child, you know, the first child, we probably gonna be sounding all types of crazy. We just go, you know, we just gonna be confused. We're gonna be, is this, we have to learn their cries. We have to learn how to have a child in the house with us. And you know, by the time we get to like, you know, second, third, more children, it'll be like, oh, okay. It'll be easier. Like riding a bike. Yeah. Do I still remember how to ride a bike? But until then, until we have our first kid, we're just gonna keep trying to take care of other babies and learn yeah. more about them. So it was fun. That was it. We're hoping to see her on a Sunday again. I don't know if she's spending the night because I have to work. Uh, no, but probably. you know, yeah, it was fun. It was a fun experience. I, I enjoyed it. It definitely was. I think that especially when you want to have kids or you know you're trying to conceive, I think that's something that is something that you should do. Not just babysit for a few hours, but you know, see, find somebody you trust to let you. Take the child overnight. I think it's a very, it's a teacher moment. Good experience. You know. Good experience. Thank y'all so much for watching this video. Just remember, God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. Lord willing, we will see y'all next time. Bye. Keep watching for our end screen and you'll see another video you should watch. Make sure you watch it. Make sure you watch our last video. Don't watch it as well. And our next video. What do we just do? How do we get up on the floor? You did that. I'm tired.